which is that if you have, you know, addiction is a highly treatable, highly survivable illness, and with the right treatment, properly applied, recovery is expected, right? Um, we have treatment modalities, um, for, for, for example, that we use with safety-sensitive professionals like, like doctors and nurses and pilots that are 90% success rates. Um, it really is about matching the right treatment with the right care. So people develop that, that attitude that treatment doesn't work or they have to go 15 times or only 10% you know, make it when you don't have the right treatment. So if you're taking somebody who's living in a tent under an overpass who's been on the street for 15 years using heroin and trying to put them through a 30-day program, you're not gonna be successful. So, so we, we have to recognize that longer term, different model programs are necessary. And when you have those, then success should be, should be expected. But look, this is a serious illness. It's a fatal illness if it's not treated properly. And you know, uh, getting the right models in place, you can have much, much, much higher success rates than that. Christine, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, that was a very fulsome answer, yeah. but I think for us too, it's like how do we have predictive ability too? Because there's a lot of statistics that get thrown around that aren't actually based in literature They're or not. research, right? Yeah. So um, us as a provider, like we use a really large host of psychometrics and different measures and, and different therapeutic techniques to ensure we're treating what the actual problem is. To Marshall's point, the treatment's what it needs to be. Um, and that we can track that over time. And then from that rate, we have a huge amount of outcome success. I mean, currently we follow over 700 of patients that we've treated, but we'll continue to do the same measures here. Um, and even though it may be a different population, like the ability to treat specific components, whether it be trauma, whether it be issues from childhood, whatever it may be, being able to really be specific allows us to not fall into the trap of using the continuous sort of cycle of recidivism or even just the behaviors that lead to continued addiction. So I, I would echo really everything. Right, yeah, I, I just asked what you said. You've had 700 people go through your various programs. Yeah. What has been your success rate? Was it higher than 10%? That. Yes, it has been higher than 10%. <laughs> it ranges depending again on population and how and commitment to aftercare after treatment being a really key component for about a year after. Ranging anywhere, the current rates we have are 75 to 87 percent for those that are engaged in our programming. So, I mean, it's quite high. Again, those pilots we have a 90 percent, or medical doctors we have a different success rate. This population may be slightly lower depending. They remain mm -hmm. in the community, etc. That being said, it would be much higher than 10 to 25. I, absolutely. I would also say that, you know, when I hear, uh, when I hear people say, as somebody in recovery from addiction, when I hear people say, and I'm not putting this on you, but when I hear people generally say, you know, it's only a 10% success rate, or, or people are going to have to go multiple times. Mm -hmm. I, 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 aside from giving my answer, I also say, yeah. So what? Right? Some people are going to need to go a couple of times. Um, in the same way that I would say to somebody who said, well, you know, chemotherapy is a waste of time. Like, I know somebody who's had to have three rounds. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it, and so what? You know, it, you, know you, 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 with the right treatment dosage, right, and, and care again, this is a chronic illness. And so the goal in addiction treatment is to initiate recovery in the patient, and to teach the patients. Uh, I would also say, these are not places, addiction treatment is not about bringing somebody in here and doing something to fix them. That's not what happens here. Uh, and I think it's important to demystify this process. These are places of learning, right? These are places where people come in and stabilize, and the teachers teach them how to live their life clean and sober, right? that they are more places of education than they are places of medicine. And depending on the type of education that you receive is gonna dictate how you're gonna go on and use that. You can go to a community college or you can go to Harvard, right? And if you get you know, really good education in the right model to teach you how to live your life clean and sober, then you'll, you'll do very well. The magic of the work that these people will do here is about is about motivating, right, and and using their techniques to inspire, uh, and to and to teach the technique of of recovery. 